Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl. I'm a creative entrepreneur embracing every aspect of life with artistic intention. Join me as I share the way I live and all the tips and tricks along the way. Allow me to inspire you to do the same. Please like, share, or comment on my videos. I'd love to hear from you. And if you subscribe to my channel, you'll be first to know when there's something new. I designed this necklace cowl for springtime because sometimes when it's still too windy and you need a little warmth around your neck but you want to be reminded of flowers in springtime, this is a great piece. With all these layers, it really will trap in the warmth even though it's very light. Uh, today in this video, I'll show you how to do the I-cord and picos to make these adorable little flowers on the cord. So let's get started. You're going to need a pair of double point needles or a short corded circular needle. This can't be done on straight needles very easily, so I would suggest not using them. You're going to use a size 8 or 5 millimeter, and this particular cowl is worked in Be So Bold yarn, which is a worsted weight, and it uses about the entire skein, which is 162 yards. We're going to start with a slip knot. Okay, and we'll slide that onto one of our needles. Now holding your tail yarn in front and your working yarn, yarn out away from you, we're going to insert our right needle into the slip knot, knit into the front and the back loop of the slip knot and pull the slip knot off and cinch to tighten it. And now we have our first round of stitches. I-cord looks like rows, but it's really rounds because we're sliding our stitches to the opposite end of the needle instead of turning our work, which means we're actually working in the round. It sounds a little weird, but it really is true, and that's why it's not suggested to do this on straights, because you'd actually have to do a lot of extra steps in order to uh, replicate this on straight needles. So we knit our two stitches, and we're going to slide our work to the end, other end of the needle. We're going to knit our two stitches and in the beginning of I-cord you want to pull on the tail to get the stitches to start lining up. As you go along they'll start doing this on their own. Slide to the opposite end of the needle and knit both stitches. For this particular pattern we're doing 15 rounds of this and then we'll do our flower made of picots. So let's pretend this is 15 rounds already and I'm going to show you how we do the flowers. It's done with a combination of knitting cast on and bind off. So we start with a knitted cast on of three which is you pretend like you're going to knit that stitch but instead of sliding that one off we pull the new loop onto the left hand needle. So that's a knit cast on one and here's a knit cast on two and a knit cast on three. Now you want to bind off those three stitches, but not the two original ones. And to bind off, we have to knit one to bind off one. So we're actually knitting two in the beginning, slipping the first stitch up and over the second. So then we'll knit one to bind off two, and we'll knit one to bind off three. And then we'll place that original stitch back onto the left hand needle. And that's a three stitch pico. We're going to do that again. We're going to knit cast on one, knit cast on two, and knit cast on three. And then we're going to bind off those three stitches. And remember, you don't count the first stitch you knit because it takes two stitches to bind off one. So you want to count the bind off, not the stitches you're knitting. It's a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, that's how you uh, count binding off. And when you're binding off a whole row, it doesn't matter. But when you're binding off and leaving some on, it really does matter. So now we've moved our original stitch back to the left hand needle, and we now have two picots. So now we want to do that a third time. So we're going to knit cast on three, and then we're going to bind off those three.
and place our original stitch back on the left hand needle like that. And now we're going to do it one more time for a total of four picots. Knit cast on three and then bind off those three. Okay, I'm gonna set our work down. We're not going to slide that one to the left hand needle just yet. First, I want you to see what it looks like. And now we're going to pick up into the side of those four picots. So we're going to pick up and knit one, pick up and knit two, in order to cinch these together to make them look like a flower, we have to bring this side together so that the picots pop out. So okay, so now we've got our four picked up stitches. We're gonna slide the stitches from the right up and over the stitch on the left, one at a time. And now we're back to our original stitch of the two stitch I-cord. Knit the second one and slide our stitches back to the opposite end of the needle and we're ready to do our 15 rounds of I-cord again. And that's all there is to this pattern. You're going to do 15 rounds of I-cord where you knit two and then slide them to the other end of the needle. And then you're going to do the four pico flower after every set of 15 rounds of I-cord. And let me show you what that looks like over here. Here's one of our picots and our 15 rounds of I-cord, and then another little pico flower. Aren't those adorable? And so you're gonna to wanna to do that till you've reached almost the entire skein of yarn, and then you wanna wrap them together. As you're going along, this is a really long piece of I-cord, as you can imagine. Using a hair clip to keep these in position is a great idea. I've made mine about 24 inches in circumference, so it is plenty to go over my head and then drape down on my neck a little bit. Um, I cinched this one together with a simple crochet stitch, single crochet, but you could also just do this with a yarn needle and just wrap. It's about 50 or 60 wraps. And then it's one continuous piece of yarn for this entire necklace cowl.